Well, welcome everyone, this is theCUBE. My name is Paul Gillen, I'm the Enterprise Editor of SiliconANGLE. And today we have a CUBE Conversation interview with Ash Ashtosh, who is the CEO of uh, Actifio, a company that you may not have heard of, but which has raised a lot of money and is, uh, is a unicorn company based in Massachusetts in the uh, storage copy data virtualization arena. Now, if you've been around the storage industry for uh, any period of time, you've probably heard of Ash. He's a 25-year veteran of storage, the storage business. He is uh, the founder of a number of companies, including uh, AppIQ, Serrano Systems, uh, the author of uh, numerous storage standards, and uh, was at Greylock Partners as a VC, and then came over to uh, to head up Actifio. Uh, also a CUBE alumna, uh, alumnus, he has been on the CUBE before, it was about five years ago, uh, I believe it was, yeah. uh, Ash. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for joining us today. A lot has happened in those five years. You've it been is. on a uh, growth trajectory. Uh, why don't you tell us about the, the status of the company right now, and, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about your technology. Yeah, that's great. So, just as an introduction, uh, we pioneered this whole notion of copy data virtualization, and today Actifio uh, delivers data virtualization where there's instant access to data that is inherently protected and completely independent of infrastructure, basically delivering the same capability that uh, led us to start Actifio um, based on the fact that servers were virtualized, networks are getting virtualized, it was time to get data to be virtualized. And over 1,900 of the global enterprises today in 37 countries use Actifio. Some of the largest financial services organizations, some of the largest service providers, 60 of the largest service providers in the world that use data as the fundamental resource that they go back and sell. And pretty much any organization with a decent amount of data, when we talk about decent amount being 40 terabytes or above, or lots of people who use data, where digital data is the, the foundation of the business, uh, that, so that's what we've been spending quite a bit of time on. So uh, th there's been a fundamental change in the way people think about infrastructure, and we believe uh, when sheet metal and blinking lights have been replaced by APIs, it is time for making data the new infrastructure. When you say a data, to make data a virtualization, to, yeah. to make a, a data virtual in the same yeah. way that we made networks and storage and, and servers yeah. virtual, what does that mean, data yeah. virtualization? That's a great, great question, right? So if you, if you look back at the, the origins of the company about eight years ago, as we started seeing more and more businesses becoming digital, the transformation of every business to be a digital enterprise, changed the fundamental nature of what's most valuable for an enterprise. Data and applications became the most valuable asset. They became the lifeblood of how I run my business. Whether it is Uber, the largest taxi company with no taxis, whether it is Airbnb, the largest hotel company with no hotels, or Rosetta Stone, one of our customers who used to sell languages, language translation, language learning software on CDs, now completely does it online with no assets. The, for these businesses, what used to be a very simple process of applications create data and ops, operations people manage data, turned into applications create data that is then used to go back and develop new applications because I'm, I need to respond to my users. That is then again used to go back and create new analytics that is then fed back into the application. What used to be a simple ops became DevOps and now become and now has become a DevOps lytics, we call it. You know, it's a combination of DevOps and analytics. And it, it completes a cycle. That whole resource is based on one fund fundamental concept. It doesn't depend on servers, it doesn't count on networks, it doesn't rely on the fact that there's a specific storage. What it relies on is my data. And that is one I need to be able to access instantly. The ability for, a, for an application to come back and use an API to get any data I want from a single system of record for the enterprise, that's what Active Field delivers. So think of us as, as this fundamental system of record for the entire enterprise where I can go tap in, just like I call Amazon or AWS for for a resource, whether it's compute, network, or storage, you make an API call to Actifio, you get SAP from 14 days ago that 24 of my developers can go back and develop against. You can go back as a retail organization instead of creating another entity for data warehousing, call an API and look at last year's data and run analytics, right? run Hadoop on it, run all kinds of data warehousing applications on it without having to go back and create another pool of storage 
and infrastructure. So for the first time, you have a single place where data is the new infrastructure, and you really don't care what, what underlying well, infrastructure. This sounds, uh, pardon my ignorance, this sounds a lot like a database management system to me. What's yeah, the difference? Yeah. I think um, this is, data is more than databases. Right? Now, we have users who not only manage structured and unstructured data as part of the life cycle, we have people putting IOT data, social media data, data from other external resources, but more importantly, there's a bunch of stuff that the operations people used to do to, to protect the data. There are things I have to do to back it up, to make sure it is business, from a business resilience perspective, it's available. Make sure it is mobile, it's the, there's mobility built in so that it's available where I need it to be. We have one of the largest financial institutions today that has over 3,000 databases now, going up to 5,000 by the end of the year. Several hundred developers in eight countries access this data from anywhere with no concern for what infrastructure it's running on. There is no more dependency on operations person to give me the data I need to do what I need to do, whether it's developing, fixing a bug, or running analytics. Very, very different from the way you used to think about it before. So database, or even data warehousing, was an old model where data you Data lake. Yeah, uh, those are all dumping data in there. That, that, but that's, that's a perfect example of another copy I needed to make, specifically for one operation, versus I already have the data in the enterprise. We virtualize the whole thing in one single system of record that manages all aspects of the life cycle. And how are you protecting that data from, from corruption on the, on the back end? I mean, we were talking about live data or, or trans operational transactional data. Uh, operations people get pretty nervous about, letting, uh, about granting access Absolutely. to that for, for purposes that, that aren't related to, to the, the, the business transaction. That is a great question, which is why we set out seven years ago and pioneered this whole notion called copy data. The reality is in the enterprise there are two kinds of data. One is production data, stuff that business applications are running on, and you cannot impact this because this is what my transaction, this is what my, when I swipe my card, this is where activity is going on. And then there's an entire business, in fact, a very valuable part of the business that uses copies of this data for development, for analytics, for protection, for disaster recovery. And we virtualize this entire part of it without ever touching anything on the production side. So we never go back and touch the production part. We, we make one copy, what we call the golden copy, manage its entire life cycle through a distributed object file system that is independent of infrastructure, that takes care of mobility that's required, and that allows for a, for a, a very different way of thinking about what a storage system is. Um, a lot of, I can get into the details of how this is done, but this is about moving the conversation to application objects that I need as opposed to storage LUNs or volumes. Because really, at the end of the day, I care about a file, I care about my SAP object, I care about six months of retail data, then which LUN and which volume it came from and it is important to completely abstract this notion out. So what's the payoff here? Is, is it agility? Is it a faster application development? Is it savings on data storage? Absolutely, yeah. So began, so companies seven years old, uh, first few years, it was all about driving down the footprint of storage. So two, two dimensions, right? Footprint of the, the ability to bring in all these disparate copies down to one single golden copy that reduced the footprint. But second, it was also the very similar to the VMware part. Uh, it was about commoditizing storage. I didn't need all the fancy snapshot and replication that a storage array gave me. I just needed a reliable storage box that I could run my data management software anywhere on. So cost was a big part, and that was a big driving force. And we have organizations where we walked into, uh, in a five year period, we have taken out 292 million British pounds of hardware, gone, gone, because there was so much of redundancy all over the place, which was ridiculous. Um, there were 8,000 developers accessing individual copies of data all over the place. There were silos of backup everywhere. This DR spread out all over the place. And you consolidated all that into a single system of record. So that's number one. But even more than that, in the last two years, 43% of our business comes from agility. It's about speed of access to data so that I can develop faster, so that I can develop my applications faster, so I can give my, bring up my business applications faster. Uh, about two years ago, we, along with the service provider, we delivered the world's fastest business resiliency solution. You can bring up your entire data center in 20 minutes. Took you eight weeks. 
the ability to bring up that either either for availability or for applications or analytics speed became a big part and as a result if you think about consolidation simplification the third big part was driving down the complexity of this entire management process you know managing data life cycle as we know the you know, backup administrator was a hazing job right you know when you guy came in they would make him a backup guy uh, and that was one job but now for the first time you have a, a chief data officer who can literally control per application the SLA that defines the entire life cycle with one place called Actifio and not have to deal with every piece of infrastructure anymore. So three parts, cost, speed, and uh, there's the simplicity. And it's ironic that until four years ago or two years ago, cost was a big part, but we believe now fast is the new big. Speed has become the most important part. So, uh, do customers know that they have a problem, or do they know that they have an opportunity, agility, yeah. as you're yeah. talking about? I mean, what is the what is the awareness uh, yeah. of the cycle like? How much do you have to evangelize these ideas? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a, it, it took us four years to let the world know. This is the, the burden of creating a category, is that you have to go out there and evangelize. And fortunately, the problem was so obvious that it, it took us five minutes to tell people how much it costs you and why it is such a big issue. But four years later, uh, now you have every storage company and half a dozen startups and every backup company getting into the copy data business, one form or the other. And I believe, I think it's now, when, when, I, when I see some of the largest customers of ours saying, hey, we're putting out an RFP for copy data, I think we know we have arrived. And people have realized that this is as big a problem as they had seen on the virtualization of the compute side, that they've got to solve this bigger problem. And it's, it's, not, it's not because of cost. We went from zero to 43% in less than two years on the DevOps and agility and hybrid cloud side. We had no, no business in that less than two years ago. But people are beginning to realize, you know, speed, application development, analytics is even more important than saving money. Well, when you talk about speed, I mean, can you quantify that? What, what do you mean by, by how much faster Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the I mean, uh, so we have some of the largest healthcare companies that have well over 100 terabyte of single instance of a database. Single instance. Would take them four to six weeks to restore these databases, if ever. First of all, they couldn't be backed up. But when they were backed up, it would take them weeks to restore. Less than five minutes. You can get an entire virtual instance of a database to come up. Three terabyte, five terabyte, 50 terabyte, 100 terabyte databases. You're talking about orders of magnitude of speed. And it's very simple. We just took out the whole business of, if you think about what we have done, we took the, the, the paradigm of, I used to have data on disk, and it, used, it needs to go on to tape. And so I need to do the translation, put it on the network, bring it up here, and when I, need, when I need it restore, I need to bring it back. We just eliminated the process of trans, translating or trans, transforming the data formats, and worse, ever having to bring it back. We look like a storage system. We look like we have a fiber channel, iSCSI, and NAS interface. The only difference is when you connect to us, you determine what data you see behind. So unlike a traditional storage system where, where the data I see is what I wrote, and the storage system is a dumb device who's got only context it has is blocks, we have the complete context. You, you point to Actifio, and it looks like, a, looks like a storage node, a virtual one. And you say, I want to see uh, the way Oracle looked like, or I want to see the way my entire data center looked like 10 days ago. We instantly recreate that ent entire stuff and make your quote unquote LUN or volume look like what it was, synthesize it. And that's the difference. So a time machine. It is absolutely a time machine. And you know, I've been in the storage business for a long time. I built the, as part of the team that built the very first you know, uh, storage systems, um, did the SCSI protocol, fiber channel protocol. And one of the things we did very well was, was based on a model that a compute and storage were pretty tightly connected and there was very little routing in between, very little context required. All the conte context and routing was left up to the networking guys. And as you got to the point where your data was decoupled from infrastructure, it was going everywhere, you needed to bring in the, the notion of a context. You needed systems to know which applications they came from, what time they came from, what's the life cycle of this object, and needed to be managed completely seamlessly. So think about what we've done is to go fix something that we, we, we kind of made a mistake on 25 years ago on the entire storage protocols. 
and created a new th new one. Well, now with with the emergence of, of Hadoop and hyperconvergence, we're seeing a move back to positioning the data, taking the data back close to the computing yeah. uh, resource again. Yeah. How does that affect what you do? How do you play with that? And so, and I think the, as most people will say, the biggest gravity in IT is data. It's hard to move. You can bring up a server, you can bring up a VM, you can even bring up an application in seconds because there is no gravity to that. To bring data to where where you need your application to run takes an enormous amount of time. People talk about bringing up, spinning up applications in, uh, in AWS. Well, you can spin up an application, you just can't get your data fast enough. What we've done is to take care of the mobility of data wherever you need it to be. We it built into Actifio is the, is the notion of the world's most efficient way of moving data around. But more importantly, you can, with all the, all the capabilities around, you can spin up any application you want right where the data is, right where Actifio is. Uh, in addition to th some of the data mobility part, we have a ton of applications on orchestration. It's not just we move data around. We, we literally, in business resiliency, we were talking about um, bringing up a data center for, for, for something that's failed on a, on a site, fail, failover site. We not only bring the data around, because we know the context, we know it's Oracle, we know it's, it's IP addresses, we orchestrate the entire process of bringing up the applications, re-IP the addresses, take care that they come up in the appropriate order, order that's, that's supposed to come up with. The ability to spin up an application, the ability to, to instantiate a VM, that is cheap. That is instant. The question is, where do you want to bring up? Now we have, we have large development organizations that when they log in, some of the, some of the developers end up developing their applications in an Oracle Cloud environment. Not on premises anymore. They don't even know that's happening. Some are still on premises. And this ability to make underlying sheet metal and blinking lights completely invisible because you have data to be you know, a, a transparent layer, that I think is the ultimate. You're talking about storing and managing a huge amount of data though. Absolutely. For you. How do you, what do you do to provide the scalability that you need to do That's that? a great question. <clears throat> it's very, very easy to build what Actifio built at a desktop level. Well, Apple Time Machine is a great example. Not that hard. It's very, very hard. It's an engineering challenge to build what we have built at the enterprise scale. You know, we have some of the largest organizations we deal with petabytes of data. And it's all about, about building every step of the way from the time we capture data. We are very efficient in capturing data at the application level. We have no context of what storage systems are underneath. We're very, very efficient at storing data. We're very efficient at moving data. And finally, very efficient at bringing up. Every step of this, this four-step journey, uh, you have to be super efficient at managing. You know, the, the, the context has to be about data, not about storage. And so often you see a lot more copy data companies coming out with, with storage systems saying, hey, I have a snapshot, and therefore it's copy data. So it's a glorified snapshot manager. Did you write your own file system? Absolutely. When I, if, you, if you have to do this, what you have to do is a distributed object file system that has one single global namespace. Because I should be able to access my data anywhere, but the context of what I'm accessing has to be in an object that is taking care of the workflow and the mobility across any location. This is hard. It took us a lot of time to get it right. It's hard even to explain, much it less is hard. to build. Yeah, but the, the part that we make it very simple is go call an API or use an application, access your data anywhere, and assume you will never lose the data unless you, know, you want to delete it. Now, you have raised uh, $225 million. Mm. Um, last round was uh, over two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, your investors appear to be very patient. Mm. Uh, what, where are you looking from to, to take this business in terms of a, of, of a liquidity event, or, mm. or what's, what's the end game? So the end game is simple. The end game is um, uh, there's an opportunity to create a, a sustaining business that fundamentally changes the entire storage slash IT market. Uh, if you no notice what's happening in the in the entire storage market, you know, this whole digital transformation was supposed to create an explosion for storage industry. It was supposed to create so much opportunity because all that digital data needed to be stored somewhere. If you remember 10 years ago, what turns out it's created an implosion of storage industry. There's finally, EMC has, has been acquired. And we see that the old model of, of storage is going to be replaced by data. And we see an opportunity for us to go back and start, and we, we chose to start at the top, the toughest problem, which is go after the enterprises 
that have the most amount of data, that are building the biggest of the businesses around data, and start there. And so if, mo if, you, if you look at our customer base, it is a global 2,000 accounts. Uh, I would say more than 2,000 accounts now. But that's where the stickiest part of the business is. We could have chosen to go after the SMB part, which is you know, a lot more churn. We have a total of uh, four users in the last seven years that we have had a churn on, four. And I imagine once they make the investment, it's very difficult for them to decouple it, even if they wanted to. But it's also the, n the value they're getting. It's the number of people who are, who are running on Actifio platform. There are 8,000 developers in an organization that use Actifio. You cannot take it out. By the way, it's also doing backup. It's also doing disaster recovery. It's also running analytics for some people who are, who are going out and using cloud analytics, not even my own. I'm, I'm using a third party analytics in the cloud. This ability to create, that's why, this is what, what I meant by calling you know, data as a new infrastructure. Because I have people who want data and you have one place that provides a system of record you can call anywhere you want or use the tools we provide and do what's required to build your digital business. So we, we believe there's a, there's a phenomenal opportunity to create this. We created a new category. Uh, we believe there's a new opportunity to come back and create a sustaining company. And so we shifted pretty heavily about, uh, about a little over a year ago to focus on becoming a profitable company. And we'll see when if the users want uh, us to go public or not go public. I think the one thing you'll see in Actifio, just by the nature of the kind of, kind of customers we're dealing with and the fact that we're dealing with data for them, this is a, a, a laser-focused company on customer success very laser focused. So the day the customer tells us you have to be a public company, maybe we will. Mm, probably won't hear that from, you won't hear that from your investors before your customers. But it's true, but you know, it's I I ironic. Some of the largest companies today are private. Dell EMC is a private company. Yeah. Right? Nope, the, the, market, the markets have not been kind lately, so, uh, yeah. so you're biding your time. Yeah, you know, and we have no urgency. And I've always said this for years now, there are, there are three constituencies that really care about being public. One, number one, by far, is uh, if our users say, hey look, transparency of your financials is important for us, that'll be the number one criteria. Obviously, shareholders become the number two part. And third one is competitive nature. And we don't see much of a competitive headwind so far. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Ash, you, Paul. Ashutosh, uh, great to see a, a company, Massachusetts-based company, uh, doing well, uh, killing it, and in a field that, uh, that has great growth, obviously, left to it. So best of luck. Hope you'll join us again soon. Thank you, Paul. I look forward to it. This is theCUBE. I'm, I'm Paul Gillen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.